Okay, today I'm gonna show you how I clear Arc Knight stages when I go in completely blind, so that you can clear one more stage without having to consult the Italian god himself. You just need to use your brain. Jumping right into it, the stage that we're gonna be doing today is S5-8. I have never ever ever done this stage before, not even on practice mode. And you can tell that I've never done this in practice because it's missing the gray hex gun. For those who don't know, if you've done a stage on practice mode like S3-6 like me, you will get this gray hex gun signifying that you've done the stage before. So S5-8 here for me is completely blind. The first thing that I usually do is take a look at the recommended operator levels. In this case, the recommended operator level is Elite 2 level 10. Now, I usually clear stages when I'm severely under level. I beat 4-10 when my guys were Elite 1 level 30, but the recommended level was Elite 1 level 70. So what this means is that you don't necessarily have to be at the level that is recommended. You can be under level and you'll still be fine. What the recommended level does tell you is how difficult you should expect the stage to be. So Elite 2 level 10 for my team that looks like this, where a bunch of them are on Mastery 3, that's not really that challenging. However, I know that it's still possible for me to mess up if I deploy the wrong type of units. So okay, we have a rough idea of how difficult the stage is. Then we read the description. A lot of people skip this step. The description here actually tells you a lot about the map. It says, enemies attack from different directions in this battle. Be careful of the large number of casters that are approaching. Well, that instantly tells you what type of enemies you're gonna go against. Now we can take a look at the map. So from this map, we can see that there are three enemy spawns and two home bases with four different lanes. There's the top lane, mid lane, bottom lane, and left lane. As for pinch points, there are two pinch points. What are pinch points? Pinch points are places on the map where enemies have to go through in order to reach your base. The two pinch points are right here and right here. If enemies don't touch this tile, it's impossible for them to get to your base. The general area around those tiles as well and most of the tiles on the top lane and bottom lane, they're all pinch points, meaning it's a smart idea to put someone with high block count on these tiles so if enemies don't leave. Defenders and AoE guards are a good choice. The next thing I'm gonna look at is whether I should protect my base or attack the enemy spawn. Usually it's safer to deploy all your units around your own base because it takes time for the enemy to get to your base and this is time that you can use to kill the enemy and prevent the leak. However, in this situation, it seems that if I try to protect my base here, I might get shot down by casters because my prediction is that casters will spawn in the middle. I'll get to why I predict this later. If I look at the left side enemy spawns, I can also see that in front of the enemy spawns, these tiles are placeable. And because I have a Heliger, this means that I can effectively either shut down completely or take a lot of pressure out of one of these spawn points. Now, another thing you have to consider is what type of enemies you're going to face. Yes, we already know the casters are going to be coming because it says in the description, but the description doesn't necessarily tell you all the enemies that are going to come. Here's what I predict we're going to fight against. We're going to fight against Naruto Runners, Red Chapter 5 casters, regular Chapter 5 casters, possibly dogs, and maybe defense runners. I don't think we're going to fight any drones. Now, the reason I can come to those conclusions of what type of enemies we're going to face is because I know what stage we're in. We're on Chapter 5. Chapter 5 introduces defense crushers, those new casters, the Naruto runners, the new type of soldiers, etc, etc. Because I know we're doing a chapter 5 stage, I have a rough idea of what to expect. Even though the description of the stage doesn't say there are defense crushers, I don't think it's on Elite 2 level 10 for no reason. Okay, so now we have a rough idea of what we're going to be fighting against, as well as what the map looks like. We also know whether we should deploy closer to our spawn or closer to the enemy spawn. In this case, I want to put my guys on these pinch points right here and right here. I believe that the enemy casters will spawn from the middle lane, the reason being all of these tiles here are blocked out for a reason, so you can't camp the enemy spawn, nor can you deploy a defender here to draw all the enemy fire. The only way that you can kill enemies spawning in the middle is if you use a sniper or a caster, some sort of range unit, and usually range units don't have that much health. So the challenge here is figuring out how you're going to deal with the enemy casters without getting killed yourself. For that, I think I'm going to rely on Exu and I'm going to put her right here facing right. Exu is a super strong strong sniper, I'm going to set her on skill 2 and activate the skill whenever I need to. As for the bottom lane here, because this is further back to the enemy spawn, I don't think I'm going to have as much pressure here. I'm going to put Lapland in this little box over here facing left. This way she can hit all around in this weird sort of S shape. And right underneath X's position, I'm going to put Saria set to skill 1. The reason I'm using skill 1 here instead of skill 2 is because there's only two people in range and Lapland is out of danger. I feel that Exu will be in danger because of the casters, and skill 1 not only heals more, but it heals faster than skill 2 on Saria. At the same time, I'm also using Saria in the pinch point because she is a 3 block, so anyone running down bottom lane can't get past Saria so easily. 
On the top lane, I'm going to use this pinch point over here. So I'm going to put Pelops on this tile facing upwards to make sure everyone in this general vicinity is healed. I'm going to put Estacia in this little basket over here facing downwards. I'm going to put Blaze over here facing left. So this way I can basically double thieve them right over in this tile here. Now, why am I using Lapland and Estacia in these little baskets? Well, that's because I think there may be defense crushers and I want to use magic against the defense crushers. Lapland is an excellent choice because Lapland also silences the defense crushers. This way they can't stun us. But Estacia is the best choice I have up here since I don't have another Arts Guard. Now you realize that I've only mentioned the name of six different operators. This means I still have six left to go. Knowing that this is chapter five and we may be dealing with defense crushers, I will bring Aya Fiala as well for magic damage. Seeing as the enemy's spawn is campable, I will bring Helligro to camp their spawn. Then we gotta consider how we're gonna get DP to deploy all these people. So I'm gonna bring all three of my strong vanguards. That's Siege, Texas, and Myrtle. And then if there's any remaining spots, I'll just bring whoever I wanna bring. So that's Blaze, Lapland, Saria, skill one, Exu, skill two, Helliger, skill two, Aya Fiala, skill two, Siege, skill two, Pelopsis, skill skill two, Texas, skill two, Myrtle, skill one, Estacia, skill two. And this leaves me one more slot that I don't know what to do with. So I am going to bring my strongest operator, Silver Ash, just in case something goes bad. Now let's go into the stage and execute the plan, see how it goes. If the plan fails, we iterate on how it failed. Yay. Right, so we're in and... Okay, so we're in and instantly the plan goes wrong because there are two casters here and these are the red casters. So instantly, the first thing I do when I get in the stage, I pause the game and I look at the map. Instantly, we got to change our plans a little bit because they have such good range. They can hit all the vanguards no matter where you put them, except in these pinch points. We can also see the enemy line starting to come out. So this is, I think a dog is going to run out. My first deploy is going to be Texas because Texas generates DP fast. Then I'll deploy Myrtle in the little basket when I can to, to double up on my DP. Hello there. Hello, motherfucker. So that's not what I expected. We got a zombified soldier instead. Fortunately, I think Texas will be able to handle one of these guys by herself. I'm going to save the Texas blast for the guy. Note on top row, we already have a guy spawning, which is not great. I'm going to pop this. I'm going to find a safe spot for Siege to go in. Something like here, maybe? Yep. We're going to prop Myrtle ASAP. So as expected, uh, Texas killed one of those guys. That's good. Siege is going to help generate some DP as well. Now I need to think about who I'm going to deploy next because I really don't want to deploy someone that can be in range of any of these casters. I feel that if I deploy Exu on top of Texas, Exu won't really be in danger. So I'm going to do that first. Yeah, okay. So Exu is safe. Good. Myrtle being E2 is actually healing both our vanguards over here. So I don't have to worry about them too much. Now I need to think of how I'm going to deal with this caster over here. I don't know when they're going to start moving yet, but I better prepare for them to move. I hope I kill this guy before he moves forward. I know this caster probably isn't going to move towards Exu, so I have extra time. I don't have to deal with this guy just yet. It's this one that I'm worrying about over here, because he's going to move left. I don't know when, but if he does, he's going to hit Exu and he's going to hit Texas. Okay, so right now with what I have, one of the most effective ways I can use to take care of this guy over here is if I put Silver Ash down somewhere and use his true Silver Slash to get rid of this guy. The only problem is in order for Silver Ash to hit this guy, this guy must also be able to hit Silver Ash. So I'm going to give it a shot and see what happens. I'm just going to deploy Silver Ash right here. He's going to get shot. But he's not going to take that much damage. So hopefully the true Silver Slash will be able to kill him before he can kill us. It looks like we're going to be fine. All right, so Silver Ash barely lives through that one. We got him down. That's good. Pause. Great. Okay, now that the slight hiccup in our plan is gone, we can continue as planned. We're going to pop Myrtle, pop Texas again. I'm going to deploy Blaze on the top to get her skill starting to charge, and I'm going to remove Siege, because once Blaze is there, Siege is going to be useless. Once Myrtle is finished, I'm going to deploy Lapland on Myrtle's position. I'm going to get Pelopsis up to heal Blaze. I'm going to drop Estacia in as well. Once Texas is done, I'm going to drop in Saria as well. All right, so that's all looking extremely good. I'm going to keep Myrtle in here for now until I can get Heliger in, and then I'll deploy Lapland because Heliger costs a bit more and having Myrtle in here generate this cost for us is great. All right, so this guy here, he's not so great. I'm just gonna stop him. We're gonna save a station skill, that's okay. Now we can take Myrtle out, drop Lappy in, perfect. Skill's not ready yet. That's okay. 
Pop a station on this guy. Looks like I don't have to pop Heliger at all on them, so it's fine. We'll just leave it. We do have Aya ready. Uh, we can put Aya down here. She won't be in heal range, so I have to be aware, and I'm going to have to take her out if she gets in any danger. Hopefully, however, Exu should be able to wipe these guys off before anything bad happens. Now, let's see how much damage she takes. No, not enough damage. That's okay. Lap lens that will these guys just fine. Fantastic. Heliger doesn't need skill pop either. It's okay. We're going to pop the skill on this guy just to get rid of him faster. Uh, Exu this time does not have her skill ready, so let's see what happens. Sorry, I can heal her back up. Perfect. Let's see. So the guy's blasting Saria, which isn't isn't that great. Oh, he's blasting Blaze as well. That doesn't seem to be too much of an issue, as long as he doesn't start blasting Aya. I'm going to pop this next guy down. Hopefully, Aya will actually start targeting the caster. Pop this guy down. I don't... I don't think A is going to live there, so I'm just going to take A out. So firing at Heliger is not going to be a problem. Alright. As you can see, because this was my first ever playthrough, that was kind of messy. I expected Exu to be able to take care of all those casters. I didn't expect two casters to spawn so frequently, and so one of them ended up almost killing the Aya. Fortunately, I took the Aya out. I think one of the ways we're going to solve the Aya problem is if we put Feeder on this tile over here on skill 2, facing right. That way, when a caster steps over here, we just use Feeder to shove them backwards. Doing this means that we'll also have to shove Pelops' one block to the left, but that's okay because she can still heal in this range. Astacia doesn't need healing because none of them were ranged. So with those adjustments in mind, I'm pretty sure I can do this one again much cleaner. All I'm going to do is swap out Heliger because he wasn't actually that necessary. I'm going to put in Feeder on skill 2 over here, and let's give this a second shot, see how this goes. <laughs> okay, first thing we're going to do is deploy Texas, so this time we're a lot faster since we know how they spawn and what spawns. Rotom next. We'll pop this when the guy is actually in Texas' range. So I watched Texas' animation. The second she starts moving, I put, uh, I pop the skill. Pop this. Pop I'm waiting for this guy to move so Silver Ash doesn't have to block this guy. This way he can take a bit less damage. So right over here, drop down. Keeping a keen eye on Myrtle and Texas as well so that we can pop them the second that they're ready. Popping this, I'm going to drop in Blaze. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to feed this guy to Siege. Remember, Siege only generates DP when there's people in front of her. So we need her to hit more things. I don't want to block this guy. Let's just let it go. I'm going to pop Myrtle, though. Guy's dead. We take Silver Ash out. Now that the last guy is in, we can put Blaze in. Going to put Pelopsis in. I'm not going to put her there this time. Put her here. Yep. Going to pop Texas. Out with Texas. Put in Saria. In with Astacia. We're charging up Myrtle once again, but instead of putting down Heliger this time, we're going to put down Feeder. Right here. Gonna get Feeder in. Right over here. And we can click on her skill to find her range, and we can see that she has pretty good range. I'm going to hope that this charges up in time. This time we can actually use Astacia's skill because there'll be multiple people in range. Perfect. Boom. Going to swap out Myrtle for Lapland now. Now, we don't have Aya Fiala in. Uh, that's because we have Siege. So we take Siege. I forgot to do that. Now we can put Aya back in. There we go. Practice makes perfect. I don't have that much practice. So here we get the first caster. I'm gonna melt them first. All right. So it's the next two 
that are gonna leak past uh, Etsu. Another thing we could have done instead of having Feeder here is we could simply just deploy Silver Ash over here. We could deploy him right now, and as the casters come out, we could activate the skill. Especially at M3, that skill is going to last pretty long. Okay, so here we go. The casters are coming out. Let's see if this time we're able to protect Aya. Right here, I'm going to start shoving him back. There we go. Now the first caster is down, that's perfect. Second caster is about to spawn, Exus goes charged up, bam. Gonna pop Aya on this fat ass. I just called Estacia Aya, but that's okay. And this is perfect. So now we can do this without anyone dying, basically. Super smooth and a creative way of using specialists as well. Hey, I wanna hear from you. Did this video help you? And are there any tips that I missed that you use that you can share with other players? Go ahead and help each other out in the comment section below. By the way, contingency contract. Yes, the next guide for a contingency contract is coming soon. I am going to cover the daily stages this time as well because they are going to be harder. So be patient. They will come out soon. If you have any questions about the next contingency contract, join our Discord linked in the description and make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notifications when new videos like these come out. All right, cheers.